Rachel Holt for Nesson.com here with John Halpin of Fox Sports. John, thanks for joining us. Anytime, Rachel. Seven, seven weeks in. We've got a lot. I've got a couple of good teams, a couple of bad ones, but the fantasy season's going okay. It is going okay. I can't believe we're this far into the season already, and there's a lot of questions this week going on because not only are we dealing with some injuries, as per usual, but there's six teams on by this week. I have it written down. We have the Ravens, Rams, Dolphins, Giants, Steelers, and the 49ers. So right there, a ton of players that are not going to be on your rosters. Waiver wire is very important this week. First off, We've been saying Jay Ajayi is the guy to pick up on the waivers, and you could get him as late as last week. And if you did, you hit a gold mine, especially now with Arian Foster retiring. So is there any guy like this that you can see, maybe not this week, but down the road being a great waiver wire pickup? I'm going to give you two because, like you said, Jay Ajayi, I think last week was probably your window. I mean, if you could still get him, great, but it's it's probably going to be unlikely. Two guys, Devontae Booker for the Broncos, he seems to be in a pretty straight timeshare with C.J. Anderson. Now, he won't be like Ajayi and, and take a job, but he's probably got half a job on a team that's going to run a lot. Monday night he ran 17 times. He's available in more than 80% of leagues at FoxSports.com. He's someone you can look at. Here's another one that's a little more under the radar. Rob Kelly on the Redskins, and here's why. Last week, Matt Jones kind of got yanked from the game for a while after he fumbled, and, and he's had an issue, and Jay Gruden said, you know, he's got to take care of the ball. Well, Rob Kelly is the guy who stands to do well. Now, Rob Kelly's not a huge talent. He's probably not going to be a guy, you know, who's going to run for 100 yards a game, but he could be solid if he gets the opportunity, and he might be one Matt Jones fumble away. Okay, as far as wide receivers or tight ends that we can target on the waiver wire, are there any guys that you have your eye on? Well, Ty Montgomery from the Packers is the obvious one. I, I don't. Last week, it seemed like people didn't get all over him to pick him up, so he's still available in a lot of leagues. He qualifies as a receiver, but he lined up in the backfield a lot. So, so I mean, he touched the ball, I think, 19 times Thursday night. He would be your clear guy. Another one, Jamison Crowder on the Redskins. They seem to be shorting the field a little bit. They're not throwing as much as to Deshaun Jackson. They're throwing more to Crowder. I thought it might be sort of a blip early in the season, but he's been consistent enough that if you're in a PPR league, he could be pretty good. Okay, what do we do about some of the guys that we expect to do well each week that haven't? We're talking about Odell Beckham Jr., Jordy Nelson, Brandon Marshall. All these guys did not have a great last week. Any reason to be concerned with any of these names I just mentioned? Jordy Nelson is the one that would concern me. And now, the problem is when you say that, it's not like you can tell someone to cut Jordy Nelson. You're just going to sort of have to live with the fact that he's not going to be what you thought when you drafted him in the second round. Yeah, you know, I think Beckham's fine. Beckham's re receivers can have those huge games and then those not so great ones. I mean, he was five for 44 on Sunday, which is not terrible. But um, the, Jordy Nelson is the one of those three that would concern me the most. I, I think you just need to manage your expectations because he's he's the deep threat with the Packers, and they seem to be going more toward a a short ball control passing game that benefits Randall Cobb, Devontae Adams, Ty Montgomery more than it does Jordy Nelson. Okay, another big name that people expected to do a lot this year and hasn't really due to injuries and other factors is Des Bryant, and he should be back in week eight here. Is he a guy who you have any concerns about starting, given the fact that he is coming off an injury? Uh, I have some, Yes, I have some concerns. With that said, if I owned Dez, I probably would start him. He's pretty. He's the clear number one receiver for the Cowboys. And it sounds like, you know, Monday they said he had full reps of practice. He's ready to go. It's always a little risky with a guy coming back from an injury. But if I had Dez, I think in most cases you don't have two receivers better. Another guy I have to ask you about specifically is Spencer Ware. We've talked about this guy as well. And uh, he was one of the waiver wire targets in the beginning, of course. Now he's just blowing up um, there for the Chiefs. Jamal Charles really hasn't done anything after being slow to come off of that ACL tear. So in terms of Spencer Ware, do you think this is a guy that continues to produce or do you start to see Charles get into the picture more? I know we knew that was going to be a concern when Charles came back, but so far it really hasn't affected Ware the way we thought it would. It hasn't, and I think Ware's going to continue to be good. It, look, it was, Charles had some knee swelling issues last week, apparently. Even when he's back to full health, at this point, Ware's been with them, I think over the past two years, he's carried the ball 170 times, and he's averaging almost five and a half yards a carry. I don't know why people think 
that the Chiefs are just going to replace him. He's really good. Now, I, I think it would be great for them in real life to have that one-two punch of where with Charles is sort of the maybe 10-touch-a-game guy to, to, to maybe have more of a breakaway threat once he's healthy, like I said. But, but I think over the rest of the year, it seems pretty clear to me that Ware is going to be the busier back in that backfield. And even if Charles cuts into his workload some, he's still going to be pretty good. All right. Now, John, for me personally, I've had a hard time finding a defense that's been consistent every week. Heading into week eight, is there a particular team that you're looking at that that should have a good week? Well, it, since you're going to stream defenses, you're going to try to get one off the waiver wire if, if you're thinking like that. I've got a couple for you. Look, the Jets, as bad as they've been, they're playing the Browns. The Browns might be down to literally their fifth string quarterback at this point. So they're a team you certainly have to look at. Uh, I think that the uh, the Cowboys against Carson Wentz at home, you know, anytime you can target a rookie quarterback, I know Wentz has been solid, but but they're a team you can consider. And the Cowboys are available in 93% of leagues at FoxSports.com. Wow, and I know you mentioned that uh, as far as survivor leagues go, this week is kind of a tough one for matchups. I mean, not only do you have a number of teams on buys with less matchups to choose from in general, but you're this far in the season and it's hard to pick a team that you haven't picked already to win. So what are some teams you're looking at this week that uh, should pull out the W? I am actually this far in one of my survivor pools, and it's a really, really tough week, yeah. I think the obvious pick would be the Broncos if they're still available for you because they're at home against the Chargers. The Chargers did play well on the road last week, but the Broncos, I think, are a six-point favorite. The next one, one of my cardinal rules in Survivor is to avoid road teams whenever possible, but the Vikings on Monday night at the Bears and Jay Cutler is probably your second choice. Okay, I like them all. Any final words of wisdom for what should be a very tough week for fantasy football owners? I, I got one more. We haven't really talked too much about quarterbacks, and I mentioned the Jets and Browns earlier. If you have Cam Newton on a bye, if you have Ben Roethlisberger on a bye and hurt, or if you have even Phillip Rivers at Denver, which is a really tough matchup, Fitzpatrick is not the worst option you could look at because the Browns have just been getting shredded by opposing quarterbacks. Fitz has some good receivers. I know he's got 11 or 12 interceptions, but if you're hunting for a quarterback, he's one you should check out. Well, he certainly seems fired up, too. We don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing yet, but uh, hopefully a good thing if you're picking him up for your team. Um, Final thoughts on where we can find more of your stuff. Um, You can always check out my writing and podcast at foxsports.com slash fantasy. On Twitter with questions, I'm at jhalpin37. Okay, thank you so much for your time, and good luck in week eight, everyone.